Hey guys, Slimsy here, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Hope you enjoyed that short little new intro. Anyway, in this video, I wanted to do a full flight with the TBM. I wanted to utilize all the third-party applications that I've been using in the older sim, and I wanted to see how this new one copes with it. So the video might be a bit detailed at some points. It might get a bit taxing. Maybe there's too much info there. Maybe there's not enough. But what I would ask from you is bear with me. Let me know in the comments which areas you would like to focus on and then we'll adjust the succeeding videos based on this. So take this video as like a sampler of all the things you can do in the sim and then we can fine tune that later to what we really prefer to watch, okay? So bear with me, I'll try to put in some timestamps, some links in the video description, but uh, as always, your comments will be super helpful so I can fine tune the content. Anyway, let's get started. Starting things off with FS Economy. You might be familiar with this already. FS Economy is a third party system, fseconomy.net, where you can take jobs, uh, you can take passengers and cargo from one place to another, fly them there, and you earn money from that. And from, from with that money, you can eventually save up, put it in the bank, invest earn some money when you put it in the bank buy your own plane you get the drill so at this point i've been playing in this system for more than a year i guess so i've been able to save up enough and i was able to buy my own aircraft we have the tbm right here so this is actually what i have at the moment and we'll be flying from heathrow today from london lots of players in here at the moment going to how you pronounce this le Bourget in Paris, France. Looks like it's right next to Charles de Gaulle. So maybe we'll get a nice view of that airport. It is quite framey in this airport though. Yeah, I'm losing a lot of frames. Not sure if it's because of the AI planes, the real players, but there's actually one right there sitting in the runway, not moving for a few minutes now. That might be another player, I would imagine. Hopefully he's gone by the time we get there. So a little visual of how that looks, that flight plan. So we start off in London, in Heathrow, Echo Golf Lima Lima. We will follow some standard instrument departures, some arrivals. So we'll try to follow real world procedure, procedures as much as possible. And we'll see how the system, how the air traffic control works with that. And eventually we would arrive hopefully safely in Lima Foxtrot Papa Bravo. Right? Anyway, let's go and start it up. Cold and dark, like so. Let's reset track IR here. Alright, looks good. Set that up. If I can click it. Now, one tip I have for you guys, whenever you start with a TBM, do a cold and dark, you start it up like this, right? But turn it off again turn off everything move the crash bar down just for additional immersion and once you once you start it up again like so you'll see you get the proper booting up of the g3000 i'm not sure why that doesn't trigger initially but it triggers only on your second boot up basically and then this one Oral warning okay acknowledge the warning and the cautions that looks good Panel lighting is okay. Strobes go on. I think that's part of the Pause checklist. System test. Okay. All right. So far, plane looks good. The flight plan is already plotted in, thankfully. Let's go and make active nav into FMS so we have use of our autopilot systems. Now, I think we'll need to be pushed back here. Can we maneuver ourselves just make a tight turn i guess that's also possible because i don't really trust the built-in pushback system at the moment man that guy's still sitting in the runway <laughs> deadly okay so first things first what we need to do is we need to get the atis we need to get the weather so you can either tune that using this one so the atc window right this one scroll lock is the default hotkey for it you can tune in the ATIS frequency, or what I like to do is tune that in manually for more immersion. 
So 121.935. Hit transfer. So that becomes the active frequency. There we go. 050 Zulu. Okay. Few clouds at 4,100 feet, few clouds at 12,000 feet. Seems accurate. Temperature, one niner. Temperature, one niner. One zero. Close enough. Altimeter, two niner, decimal niner six. Two nine nine six. Runway two seven right and ILS runway two seven left in use. Seven Landing right. Landing and departing runway two seven right and runway two seven left in use. Two nine nine six. 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 Two we have India. Now we can tune into clearance. 121.980. Transfer that one. And now we can request our IFR clearance like so. Heathrow clearance delivery TBM 1 Charlie Lima IFR to Eli Barget ready to copy. Eli Barget. Probably not how you pronounce it. TBM 1 Charlie Lima is cleared to Eli Barget airport as filed. Take off runway 27 right. 27 right. 8,000 feet. 8,000 feet. Departure frequency is 118.475 squawk tree 7. Let's read that back. TBM 1 Charlie Lima cleared to Eli Barget Airport as filed. Take off runway 27 right climb and maintain 8,000 feet. Departure on 118.475 squawk 3762. TBM 1 Charlie Lima read back is correct. Contact ground on 121.905 when ready to taxi. Alright, 121.905. You can tune into that now. And we can start up the plane. That should be good. So we have our clearance now 8,000 feet. I'm not sure if that's accurate because I did plug in a standard instrument departure. So I have a third party application called Navigraph. It's a subscription based system. You pay yearly to it and then you get access to the charts like this. So it's more immersive and more realistic, very similar to what real life pilots do use for their charts. So we have a departure called May 3 Foxtrot, departing from one way, runway 27 right, that's this one. So you'll see these different procedures turn left after uh, DME2 of London. Um, I won't go to detail, I'll go to detail on that later. But you'll see the altitude restriction is actually 5,000, not 8,000. So I'm not sure how that works. If ATC gave us 8,000, can we just ignore this? Well, I guess we'll follow what they say. But for now, let me plug in 5,000 to be on the safe side. And then if they ask me to climb, then I will climb. Alright, that looks good. Let's go ahead and start up the engine. Should be boost pump. Turn to on. Check the enunciation stair. Looking good. So now we can start the timer over here. Because the goal start the ignition and monitor the situation. NG with that to get to 13% and then once it's 13% we go ahead and introduce fuel by putting this to low idle that should start spinning the propeller right there now the timer is for 30 seconds you should have 30% NG and by 60 seconds you should have 50% NG or something like that. So the entire startup sequence should not last more than a minute. And that looks good. Less than a minute and we are all green here so I can stop that, reset it. So that looks okay already. Good. So now we can move this to high idle. Turn on the bleed. Inertial separator. Strobes, I did turn that on already. Turn on the nav lights as well. Boost pump to auto. Fuel selector auto. Turn on the AP and trims so that we have autopilot and it can trim the aircraft. That looks good. Alright. I think we're all set. 
So now we'll ask for taxi instructions. Now let me turn on the flight director as well. Go to nav mode. And uh, do we go for pitch? Let's worry about that later. Okay, inertial separator is on. Good. Right, let's request for taxi instructions. Heathrow ground TBM 1 Charlie Lima with India ready to taxi IFR. Load this up. TBM 1 Charlie Lima taxi 2 and hold short of runway 27 right by taxiway Bravo Lima 2 1 Alpha Alpha 3 Alpha 2 Alpha 1. Contact wow. tower on 118.705 when ready. That doesn't seem completely accurate, let's say. Um. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 27 right via taxiway Bravo right Lima 2 one, 1 Alpha Alpha mouse. 3 Alpha 2 Alpha 1 TBM 1 Charlie Lima. So, I'm not sure. It looks like, because normally for other airports, the taxiways are not accurate. But this one, it looks pretty close. So it says, Bravo. So we take this taxiway right here. Lima 21. So this one, we proceed. And then Alpha. So we turn left here. And then we go Alpha 3, which is this one. But Alpha 2 and Alpha 1 doesn't make sense. Like Alpha 3, Alpha 2, Alpha 1. <laughs> Sneak our way around. And then uh, hold short. So I guess we'll take Alpha 3 and we'll stop there. But that's close enough, actually. That I'm impressed. Because for other airports, the taxiways are nowhere near as close. So I'm not sure. Is Heathrow handcrafted? Maybe they customized this properly. Alright, anyway. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's also try and plug in the frequency for tower. So later we can just transfer and don't have to plug it in anymore. So leave that on standby for now. Taxi lights can go on. Parking brake can go off. Looking good. Start moving. Maybe start moving. There we go. Let's just make a sharp turn here. Hopefully we don't snag that guy right there. But yeah, I don't really want to push back in this. Using the standard push back is not very cool. But yeah, that's the power of Navigraph charts. You have access to the close to close enough real life charts. Close enough to what the real pilots are using. And you, you can see where you are in the sim as well using the integrations it is a paid service though so separate from the one you used to you paid for the sim but it's pretty immersive so if you're serious about really wanting that immersion that might be the next level for those who ha don't have that yet so we are now on bravo oh my goodness look at the lighting on that plane of it in the reflections in there so we go straight bravo this is still bravo do you guys want the view of the the map like this i'm not sure or do you, do you trust me enough to <laughs> to taxi us all the way so we go straight to bravo we uh, go to lima 21 we turn left on alpha and alpha 3 and then we hold short runway 27 right i'll just leave it this here so we can sightsee a bit we are a bit too fast here. 747 on our right. Flap set that to take off. I am too fast at this point. Slow down a bit. <clears throat> Alright, slow down. So Lima 21 should be here. Then we turn left on Alpha, which is right here, I think. Yeah, this should be the one. And then Alpha 3 should be that one on the right, and then that's the holding point already. Hold short line, 27 right. There is still an aircraft on the runway. Get off the runway, please. There you go, 27 right. And I think. Should I stop here already or at that point later? I think I should stop here now. 
Let's wait for him to go. And while he does that, let's go ahead and do this proper standard instrument departure, this SID. So it does say there are a couple of steps here. There's a visual representation of the steps, but there's also like a step-by-step -step description straight ahead. Um, 27 right straight ahead at D2, DME2, London. Turn left, intercept 137 bearing to Epsom, cross at 5000, intercept 315 radial inbound. That might seem gibberish to some folks, but basically what it's saying is we depart from runway 27 right at DME2, that's two miles away from London. This is London VOR. So two miles away from there, we turn left. We turn left towards a 137 degrees heading. And then we proceed from there. At 10 DME, so 10 miles away from the London VOR, we should reach Epsom at 5,000 feet. And then we continue 135 degrees. That's the outbound radial 315 from Mayfield VOR here. So we continue that way at 5,000 feet still. So that's basically how it looks. And in order to follow that, we can either, well, we have the GPS, so it will guide us there. But in addition, it's good practice to also make sure that you have your VORs properly set up, your frequencies. So let's try and do that. So it says here, London, the sh chart I showed you is 113. 103.6 transfer that one so that should become active here if I put in bearing 1 yeah London is being detected in there London VOR we are 1.3 DME 1.3 miles away um, what else you can turn on the wind here and I think where is that PFT settings there is like a DME mode. One sec, guys. Huh? Yeah, I can't find it. There should be like a DME here. Anyway, so aside from that, we should have access to ATF. Mm, do we have that here? I'm not sure if we have access to that. But in any case, what we can do is for the second VOR we can track 117.9 for Mayfield put that here so we have a bit more visibility on what things are happening put this bearing to there you go so we're tracking both the London and the Mayfield VOR at the same time so we have an idea if the GPS is following it correctly or not right has he left he's still there okay uh, never mind <laughs> let's go already okay so let's tune into tower we already have that a standby frequency let's make that the active one and let's request takeoff clearance ready for Heathrow departure tower, TBM, one charlie lemur ready to go runway 27 right go. ifr to le barnett that's very formal huh tbm one charlie lima cleared for takeoff runway 27 right uh, now we should not be cleared for takeoff with that guy right there but okay Maybe he just says ignore off, that guy. Right, TBM, one Charlie Lima. So it looks like ATC does not consider AI or actually real players. Their locations, they just basically ignore them. Something along those lines. In terms of trims, takeoff trim is set. Alright, let's go ahead and line up on the runway here. Yikes, you'll have to close your eyes here, guys. Little bit of an immersion breaker in here. <laughs> 27, right? Yeah, that's this one. We don't need the entire length of the runway, so we can easily start from here. Is he moving, or am I just imagining it? Alright, here we are. Let's break here. We'll have to go past him. Heading 270. Alright. Torque set to 40, 50%. Stable. So off we go. Make 
sure not to over torque the engine to all the people we passed by there <laughs> just ignore that guys try to re maintain center line rotation speed is 90 knots rotate positive rate gear up I forgot something dang it start the flight in the FS economy did it get captured? It did. Okay, good. Alright, I think I ran that a bit late. And I am way off the runway now. Sorry about that. Let's get back on the runway heading. TBM 1 Charlie Lima contact London Center on 118.475. Flaps up. Put damper on. Still on autopilot here. So I get a bit of guidance. Ah, uh, that's not going to cut it. TBM 1 Charlie Lima, acknowledge last transmission. Yes. Going to 118.475 decimal four seven five TBM 1 Charlie Lima. So you see here, turn left. Should be turn left at 2 DME from London, but fine. 118 decimal four seven five. that's the departure frequency. Eight four seven five. London Center GBM one Charlie Lima is climbing through one thousand seven hundred feet for eight thousand feet. GBM one Charlie Lima London Center continue as planned. Altimeter two nine decimal nine six. So with working with FS economy, that's what I missed. Let's have a look at the airport first. Oh my goodness, that looks great. Let's take a photo of that. And the, the plane is still there, sitting on the runway. <laughs> I kind of messed up that takeoff. Well, the takeoff itself was okay, but I lost uh, alignment with the runway because I got con I got confused. This is the FS Economy client. So normally, we have our flight here, right, in FS Economy. And that's fine, we have our, uh, our plane here, our job, but you have the client that connects to the system, that's this one, and then you have to start the flight. You loaded everything, you have to start the flight, otherwise it wouldn't count. And that's what I forgot. Thankfully, even if we were a few feet, a few hundred feet above ground already, we were able to um, <laughs> start the flight mid-air. So it's not too late, it's, it's counting, I think it's getting counted. So that's good. Oh my goodness. The views are amazing. Alright, leveling off at 5,000 feet. We will see if uh, air traffic control will tell us to continue climbing to 8,000 because that's what they cleared us at. Also, there's, there should be a transition altitude here. So let me see. So this is us. This is the chart. We are following it perfectly. Right. So if you look at the stuff here and compare it with what we, the chart should be saying, uh, it says London, you see, 137 DME, 10 DME, Epsom. Okay, but we should be around uh, the 315 radial for. Mayfield. So you'll see this VOR. That's Mayfield right there. That's the icon. That's the arrow with the double lines. And if you look at, this is the head of the arrow, right? If you look at the, the bottom of the arrow, the other end, it's around 30315 heading right there. So that means we are on the outbound radial 315. And that is exactly what this flight plan is saying. Should be on the 315 radial for this Mayfield VOR. That's what that means. What I didn't track was Epsom. I'm not sure how to track that in this plane because that's a different uh, radio device. I think it, this has it, but I'm not sure how. Anyway, well, let's skip it. We can jump straight to Mayfield here. So 5,000 at Mayfield will keep in that altitude. So that is being followed. Okay, so it looks like they're not happy with keeping the proper altitude there so they have their own i guess they just ignore that so what we'll do is just vs here so 
climb up all our way to 8,000. London Center TBM 1 Charlie Lima requesting vector to next waypoint. Oh. TBM 1 Charlie Lima continue to Mike Alpha Yankee turning and following heading 175 proceed on course. Yeah, th there's a bit of um, mismatch with continue air traffic to Mike control. Alpha Yankee turning and following heading 175 resume on navigation TBM 1 Charlie Lima. Not all commands are properly read back. So sometimes you're expecting to read back an instruction, but apparently it's a different command altogether, a different statement. Uh, but at least, at the very least, we can still appreciate the views here. Once we clear the clouds, I can turn off inertial separator. That should give us a boost in performance, although I'm not sure if that's implemented properly, to be honest. Let's go in the exterior view and have a look at the clouds here. Ah, yes. Still breathtaking. No matter how you mix it. Beautiful. Even our tail number changed. 931 Charlie Lima. That is the, ta that is the tail number of the aircraft in FS Economy. 17,000. 17,000. Seventeen thousand. Yeah, surely it should be flight level by now. Yeah, I think that also is not properly simulated yet. Yes, I did. Climb and maintain seventeen thousand feet TBM one Charlie Lima. So if you look at the chart here, usually there would be something that says transition altitude. Yeah, that one transition altitude. That means once you go past six thousand feet. You should switch to a standard altimeter already, standard QNH even. But even the standard doesn't work here, I think. 2992. Yeah, even the standard one doesn't work yet, but like, we can tune that in manually, I think. That's fine. So, yes, a couple of uh, imperfections. Hopefully, those get ironed out. Right, we're pretty close to Mayfield here, Mayfield VOR. If you look here, we are 15.6 miles away from Mayfield. That should be pretty accurate with the chart. Where are we? Outside of bounds. Oh, because this is saying not to scale. So it's not really that close. This is actually getting extended already. So at, up, when we reach that point, the chart is no longer properly scaled where you exactly are. Alright, so we can ignore that now. So that should be basically done. We'll need that later again as we approach, as we start our arrival into Le Bouget. But for now, keep it as is. Alright, autopilot is taking care of our climb for us. Should be good there. I am doing a pretty steep climb here that's fine we should be clear of the clouds turning off inertial separator we are past 10,000 feet I can turn off the landing lights now when you turn off the inertial separator the torque will come up and so we have to be very wary of that and once we get close to 100 we dial down on the throttle as necessary so we don't go over 100% torque Unfortunately, yeah, turbo props are not properly simulated yet. A couple of people have reported this already. There's a forum post on this in the official Microsoft forums. Microsoft Flight Simulator forums and um, yeah, ba basically what's wrong is with the turbo props with this kind of engine the torque actually should go lower and lower the higher you get the higher your altitude the lower your torque would be so normally as you climb you would need to throttle up more and more and you will be able to maximize the power of the engine and at that point 
the torque will not be an issue you won't go past 100 percent but what you'll need to monitor is your ITT, the temperature inside the engine, that it doesn't go b beyond the red line, which is, I think, 840 degrees or something. But at this moment in this sim, that does not really happen. The torque just, I think, stays there or even goes the opposite way. So instead of throttling up, you would have to throttle down, which is quite strange. So yeah, I, I hope uh, that gets fixed soon. Because that is a real immersion breaker when you're flying a turboprop and I've heard that it is a problem in all the turboprops so in the TBM in the Cessna caravan in the King Air I think as well yeah all the turboprops all three of them so hopefully that gets fixed <coughs> now for some reason it doesn't seem to follow that vertical speed that I gave which is strange but now it's settling down to 17,000 flight level 170 TBM 1 Charlie Lima climb and maintain flight level 270 right wind that up there you go VS it up and let's read that back Climb and maintain flight level 270 TBM 1 Charlie Lima. As they say, aviate, navigate, and then communicate. Even if ATC waits a bit. Because yeah, with the simulator, you only have very limited capacity. You have to dial the knob using the mouse. You have to click on the command using the mouse. So you can't like multitask like in real life. So... There will be, there will have to be a bit of, um, what do you say, concession. <clears throat> How is everything else looking? Everything is in the green. Cabin pressure is climbing at a steady pace. Cabin altitude is currently 5,200 and climbing bit by bit, even though we are already 19,000 feet up in the air. Inside, it feels like we are only at 5,000 feet, which is good. Otherwise, we won't be able to breathe anymore if that's not properly pressurized. Fuel is looking good. Gallons per hour, 58. Not sure if that's accurate, but we'll leave that be. See? Overtorquing the engine again. As we climb, that should go down, not up. And it looks like this issue has been there since the alpha. So I'm not sure if the developers are planning to fix that, but I really hope so. Because it surely is one of the biggest immersion breakers out there. Mm, 10 degrees. Looks like we're locked to 10 degrees pitch up attitude. Even though I set here 3000, it doesn't really follow that. Which is interesting. Because from what I remember, the best rate of climb for this plane is 124 knots. So we can actually afford to climb a little bit steeper. But that's fine. Right, looks like we are almost over the seas now. Very different perspective from where we usually fly. It's a great different feeling. But yeah, I think I'll take care of this. It's going to be basically the climb going up to 31,000 feet to flight level 310. Waiting for ATC to give us further instructions and uh, planning our descent and briefing our descent and our approach. So I'll meet you guys later. Fast forward a bit so we get to the meteor parts, okay? Catch you guys in a second. Welcome back guys. That was actually perfect timing. <laughs> that was not intentional at all. 1900, that was quick. Let's go ahead and uh, acknowledge that before he complains. Descend and maintain flight level 1900 TBM 1 Charlie Lima. Continue 1900. 
I was just going to say that we almost just reached our cruising altitude there. Let's try to descend at around 1,500 feet per minute. That should be okay. We are getting close to our arrival here, so that would make us follow this one, the Velol 7 Whiskey arrival, at this one. So we'll be starting from Velol, maximum 250 knots, airspeed, flight level above flight level 140, at Vepet we should be above flight level 190, and at Mobro we should be at flight level 70, which I don't think is going to be followed by the sim unless ATC gives something different because if you look here at Mobro flight level 70 but here in the flight plan Mobro is still at 15,500 flight level 155 so I don't think ATC will follow that I hope they do though I really hope they do and then from there we'll follow the approach whatever ATC gives us either an ILS, RNAV, or I think they sometimes even give VOR DME approaches. We'll study how that works when they give that to us. So let's start slowing down here. Then I wanted to highlight ideally how to compute the top of descent. And I've gotten a couple of questions about that. The easiest way is to simply rely on air traffic control. Maybe the, not the most reliable, but you don't have to do any thinking. So like what just happened, if you file your flight plan and follow all the different steps and stay in touch with air traffic control, then they should give you a proper signal of when you should be descending. I think we need to descend at a bit steeper angle here. Let's go and descend at 2,000 feet per minute. That might be safer. There you go. Throttle down a bit. So the that's the easiest way. Letting air traffic control do it. But at the same time, you should have your own calculations. And at the moment, the system doesn't have a top of descent yet. So you'll have to compute it manually. So the basic thing, the basic calculation that is used most often is, I believe let's say 150 feet that the airport has an elevation looks like of 150 feet more or less but let's round that down to zero just as a ballpark figure so if you need to lose 26,000 feet that's 26,000 minus zero which is the airport elevation so that's 26,000 and uh, you remove the zero so you're remaining 26 multiply that by 3, so that's 26 times 3, 26, 52, 78. So you should start your descent at 78 miles before you reach your destination. Right now we are, how much? 75 miles away from the airport. So I think we are descending just fine. So 78 miles is when we should start our descent. We started a bit early, just almost right. And that assumes that you have a 3 degree pitch down attitude. So you see this marker right here. That's 2.5, 5 degrees pitch down. So 3 degrees is somewhere here, I guess, where we are exactly at. And I think if you compute that, you guys told me as well how to compute the exact FPM you need. And not only base it on a 3 degree angle. So based on your current airspeed, which is 225 for us you multiply that by 5 or the easier way to do that in, in, in your mind is 225 times 10 that's 2250 divided by 2 2250 divided by 2 is what? around 1 1 1 2 so that's around 1200 feet per minute so we might be actually descending here faster than we should be so let me go down back to 1500 that might be a bit more optimistic. Right. <clears throat> so let's see. Mobro. We are getting close to Mobro here. They still haven't given us any 
approach so if you look at the flight plan we have an arrival but we don't have any approach set yet ATC should give us that if you don't assign it in the initial page while doing our flight plan so in the in the main screen when you when you are doing your flight plan you have an option for choosing an actual approach but you can say there the default I think is automatic and when it's automatic ATC will give you one when you're close how close exactly I am not really sure but I hope it comes soon that going to one two five decimal seven tbm one charlie lima transfer this one and contact paris center paris center tbm one charlie lima is at flight level two one zero descending flight level one nine or zero tbm one charlie lima paris center continue to vip it as planned <clears throat> continue to vip it as planned tbm one charlie lima Absolutely love the look of those clouds and it's great working with FS economy so you can fly anywhere and do jobs and now with this new sim when you have the satellite imagery everywhere so you don't just get generic data you really get realistic looking places then you can actually literally go anywhere in the world and my plan actually for this series is to fly this plane back to Singapore or Philippines where I am TBM originally based. Charlie Lima, you are five eight miles northwest. Descend and maintain nine thousand feet. Keep speed below two five zero knots. Expect four DME runway two five approach via Mamro transition. Four DME. I don't TBM like that. One Charlie Lima, descend and maintain seven thousand feet. Keep speed below two five zero knots. They're giving us a different approach. Can we choose something else? Please stand choose... by TBM One Charlie Lima. If we choose, for example, TBM One Charlie Lima, Roger. Mm, I tried this one time; it didn't work. But we'll see if it works this time. There should be an eyeless approach here for runway two five. Looks like there's not. So they're giving us what? VOR DME, it's hard to scroll here. Let's make that larger, there you go. So they're giving us VOR DME runway 25, if you can request for RNAV. Hey, one Charlie Lima, did you hear my last transmission? Wait a sec bro. Okay, there you go. So, vectors to final approach. And then we request that. TBM one Charlie Lima would like our nav runway two five approach vectors to final. TBM one Charlie Lima, you are five two miles north. Ah, it works. Descend and maintain seven thousand feet. Keep nice. speed below two five zero knots. Expect vectors our nav runway two five approach. It works. Sometimes it doesn't. It's great. Descend and maintain seven thousand feet. Keep speed below two five zero knots. Expect vectors our nav runway two five approach. TBM one Charlie Lima. Awesome. So now that we've give, been given a an approach, that we can plug that in here. Uh, our nav, oh, this is hard. Our nav two five. And the uh, transition. How do we say it's vectors to final? Well, I guess we can just plug that in. Only load it, but don't activate it yet. Oh, that activated already. Yeah, that's I think one of the bugs. When you press load, it automatically activates it. And now what it will do, look at this. This is one of the bugs as well. It's actually turning us around back to Vepit. And then towards the, the, the thing. So, mm, let me see. Banox Mobro, so let's study that while uh, the plane itself is having trouble. So, over here, procedure for approach. So, we want uh, RNAV 25 Mobro, that one. 
in this one if we show that there's actually a mobro transition oh yeah there is this one that's perfect let's do that one instead there you go so that's the proper one mobro the problem is you can see it's going around to Vipit and then going back to Mobro again. So there's a bug there with the activating. So first and foremost, when you say load, it shouldn't change your flight plan yet. It should only stay there. When you say load and activate, that's the only time it should change your current flight plan. So that's the first bug. The second bug is it shouldn't actually lead you back to the previous waypoint you were at. So yeah, it's still not perfect. Not sim breaking a bit immersion breaking yes but not totally of a showstopper we can work around it and so if you go back here to mobro if you look at the chart uh, rnav25 let's spin that two seven doesn't show the approach there let's see I think I can so this is where we are we're going back to Vepit somewhere here and then going back to Mobro which is here so that low end route yeah there you go Vepit right there so once we reach that we'll turn around again to Mobro and from there we'll uh, loop around all the way to runway 25 right here what I can do is I can overlay that the chart right here so the chart only shows up to this point this looping thing is not really in there I guess there would be a different chart for it maybe maybe okay can we can leave that as is now if we go back to the or actually that's nice Alright, so at least I think they captured the proper altitude restriction for Mobro. 7,000 feet. In this uh, detour, I would say, that we got is a, I think, a blessing in disguise. Because I think they gave us two late descent instructions. So we basically had to loop around, do some kind of modified hold, so that we have enough time to descend to 7,000. So it took, takes a bit longer, but at least we get to 7,000 properly because based on the chart, we should be at 7,000 by the time we hit Mobro. And from there, we can go with approach to Mobro, like so. That's fine. Now, are there other charts for the approach? Runway 25, RNT, runway 25, that's the RNAV approach. Um, Let's have a look at the arrivals here. RNAV arrival instructions. Is that the one? Yeah, sometimes the charts are not that clear. They're not too straightforward. Below 10,000 feet. Landing lights. Um, let's try and find it. Yeah, but lots of charts here. Lots of very detailed charts that I don't even understand most of them, but the basic ones at least I can get my wrap I can wrap my head around. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm not sure how to trace those transitions because you if you look at the chart here, it shows you that final approach, but it doesn't show you this entire leg here, the transition from mobile looping around so without the chart how would you know that I guess there should be some kind of instruction somewhere just not sure where it is exactly and looks like the final approach fix is that one Papa Bravo 426 right there where we should be at 3000 feet right there Papa Bravo 426 Now our minimums for this one, minimums, refer to minimums, right here, MDA, that's the one, minimum decision altitude, um, what is the difference, C or D, 
Aren't they like A or something? This looks like we're going through clouds here as well. Let me start up the inertial separator. Oh, this is beautiful, guys. Punching through clouds, seeing what's at the bottom. This is nice. Here we go. Hopefully, nothing too rocky. Yeah, pretty smooth clouds. No turbulence inside at all. So now we're at 7,000 feet. By the time we hit Mobro, that should be fine. Can we actually change our assigned approach? Let's try that out. It'll give us inertial separator is on. So our nav runway 25 is what we want, but we want the Mobro transition. So let's request that one if they'll give it to give it Paris to us. Center TBM one Charlie Lima requests destination change to LA Barget. TBM one Charlie Lima is cleared to LA Barget Airport as filed. Squawk three seven six two. TBM one Charlie Lima cleared to LA Barget Airport as filed. Squawk three seven six two. Mm, not sure if that was the one Charlie Lima read back correct. Radar contact 7,100 feet. Altimeter tree zero decimal zero four continue to Mabra turning and following heading 160 resume on navigation climb and maintain 9,000 feet. That 9,000 is definitely wrong. Continue to Mabra wow, turning and following heading 160 here. proceed on course climb and maintain 9,000 feet TBM 1 Charlie Lima. This is so nice, look at this. Let's look at it from outside. Charlie Lima, you are 50 miles northwest. Let's pick that again. So yeah, quite a few bugs still, quite a few fine-tuning processes, but hopefully. TBM one Charlie Lima would like our nav runway two five approach Mabro transition. TBM one Charlie Lima, you are four eight miles northwest. There we go. Below two five zero knots. Expect our nav runway two five approach via Mabro transition. Getting too Clear slow here. Keep speed below 250 knots. Expect our nav runway 25 approach via Mabro transition. Cleared to Mabro TBM 1 Charlie Lima. There we go. Okay, good. So now we have our nav 25 in Mabro transition. Stay below 250 knots. Shouldn't be a problem with this plane. Even at maximum throttle without over torquing it. We shouldn't reach 250, maybe 230 at most. We are there already. Descend and maintain 7,000 feet TBM 1 Charlie Lima. Now we've not been given the QNH setting. Normally when you transition from a flight level to a local to, to a local altitude, you should be given the QNH the altimeter. So for now, I just press B. There we go, 3004. So we're actually above 7,000 at that point. Okay, fine. Um, now let me see the flight plan. What does it say? So procedure RNAV25, that's correct. Flight plan, if you look at RNAV here. So it's at 7,000 feet. Maintaining 7,000 feet all the way, and at Papa Bravo 425, right there, we descend to 3,000. Okay, so after we make our turn here, we descend to 3,000 more or less. Let's see if that will be consistent with what ATC will give us. Oh, cloud surfing. Kindish. Cloud punching, more like. Thankfully, it's not too cold out, so we don't need any anti-ice or anything. I don't see any icing building up on the windshield or on the wings. So we are pretty low already and it's summer. That's fortunate. <clears throat> to 
looking good there. Let's double check the charts again that we're not missing anything. Spec radar vectoring the runway extended center line. Ah, okay. So normally they would give you vectors towards this spot. But there are transitions as well. In any case, it should be fine. I also tracked the VOR, the airport. Um, is that this one? Bravo Tango? Let me see. Yeah, this one. 116.1. Bravo Tango. Bourget. So we are actually 36 miles away from the airport. So we'll be getting close here. And we'll be going far. We'll be overshooting it. Looping around and then arriving by runway 25, supposedly. One second. Why is this 274? This should be our nav, our RNP runway 25, but the final approach course is 274. Hmm, I'm a bit doubtful there. Interesting. <clears throat> also, it seems like if you look at the vertical deviation, if you look at the glide path, RNAV we're very much above so it's like it's like it's expecting us to descend already but air traffic control hasn't give us, given us anything so let's just follow what they give us and then at the airport let's have a look at how the airport looks like using, using these charts uh, taxi this one is the airport let's also pin that here FedEx 5047 climb and maintain 10,000 feet so that's runway 25, which is 9,800 in feet in length, or 2991 meters. This is the longest Climb runway they have. Once we get there, where do we park? Well, once we land there, we should be able to exit probably at Romeo 1 right here. And then we'll need to cross runway 07 on the way to the the parking. Heavy pedestrian traffic. We'll just find somewhere. Maybe somewhere here. We'll see. Okay. Looks good. Alright, I'll keep that in line with where I am at the moment. Okay, so where are we? Um, we are actually getting pretty close now. Yeah, now we see the importance of autopilot, right? Because you have so many things to consider. And if you are, you need to also fly the plane, if you fly the plane, that's it. There's nothing else you can do. You just have to focus 100% on flying the plane. But with autopilot, at least we get that huge workload off. And there's still plenty enough to do for sure working with all the different uh, communications and navigation. This is the exciting part for me. Okay, now that we are close to the airport, I think we can start tuning stuff. If I select the airport, uh, Lima, Foxtrot, Papa Bravo, was it? Yeah, Le Bourget. If you look at the frequencies, uh, that's a bit wrong as well. I would expect it would give us if it's tower, if it's uh, approach, what kind of radio frequency is that. I'm assuming tower is 118.4, but I'm not really sure. Oh, you know what we can do? We can compare that with a chart. You are 1,500 feet above your assigned altitude. Descend and maintain 10,000 feet altimeter, tree zero decimal zero two. So the chart actually says the tower it's 118.925. Um, if you look at the arrival, 
it's not really a frequency here. The airport, is there an approach maybe? Tower is 118 decimal 925, but in the sim it's 118903. So let's follow the sim, that should be close enough. So that when we're asked to transfer to tower, then it should be an easy transfer like that. And then I don't think they have any ground frequency. They, they do. Okay, 121.9. Um, let's put that here just so we have a reminder. Looking good there. There's also an ATIS. I'm not sure if that is something we can tune into. Let's try. use COM2, normally use COM2 for ATIS but I'm not sure if it works in this plane, in the sim yet still not being given any descent instructions it's a bit scary There should be something here where you turn on and off the radios. Um, looks a bit different with the 930. With the TBM 900, those were on this left side. Audio and radios today. TBM 1 Charlie Lee, you are 2-4 miles north of LA Barget. Contact LA Barget Tower on 118 Decimal 4 when inbound. 118 decimal 4? Okay, they gave us a different frequency. Alright, let's follow that. <clears throat> Tower on 118 decimal 4 TBM 1 Charlie Lima. Let's contact the tower. Ali Barget Tower TBM 1 Charlie Lima 24 miles north inbound RNAV runway 25 approach. TBM 1 Charlie Lima and Ali Barget Tower. There we go, clear. Runway 25 approach. Altimeter 30 decimal 03, wind 271 at 23. So, because we've been clear to the approach clear already, we can go directly to the approach, final approach TBM, fix, Charlie, Lima. Or whatever is the published altitude there. So, let's go and try to make our way through. So, if we compute this one. How far away are we from that um, that next waypoint? Uh, is it 23 miles or 5 miles? 23... So we need to lose 3,500 feet times 3 3.5 uh, 3 times 3 is around 10.5 yeah, maybe we don't need to rush that much. I think we can actually handle this one. Just descend to 3000 at a steady pace like so. <clears throat> oh, actually we can see that here. So we are 18 miles away from Papa Bravo 425. And we are 6000 feet more or less. We need to lose 3000. So, three, six, nine miles away before we start our descent. So yeah, actually we are descending early. But that's fine. It's not really critical that we arrive there at 3000 right on that spot. It's pretty much level here. Unfortunately, with all that busyness, we haven't had time to explore and enjoy the scenery. But yeah, here we go. First time going here in this sim. It's nice to see the varied landscape. Nothing generic. Everything is customized. Beautiful. Just keep that speed. So it's a pretty long 
leg here but after we make that so it's like a pretty long base and we turn final there and we should be able to arm the approach and our nav should take us the rest of the way towards the runway runway 25 hopefully if we've coded this correctly but yeah what i'm not sure of is this one if you look at our runway 25 this does look more like a 2.7 than a 2.5 to me. That's facing to the west like that. So I'm not sure. Final approach course is 2.74. Let me double check the other approaches. Um, so if you go for approach, runway 2.5, if you pick, for example, uh, the VOR, the one that they were originally assigning us to, that one is still 2.74. Interesting. And if you pick uh, runway 2.7, what, what will be the heading? 2.65. Strange. I would think that that's wrong, but maybe some of you guys can explain to me why that is. That an, an RNAV 25 approach would have a 274 final approach fix. I would expect you would be lined up straight on the runway. Because the airport itself, runway 25, has a 248 runway heading. So I would expect the final approach course would be 248 as well. Interesting. Alright, but going back here, what did we choose as the MDA? I'm not sure if it's C or D. I thought we were smaller than that, but let's pick the more conservative one. So minimums would be 1 to 20 feet. Wouldn't be that important here since the weather looks good. But this would be more important when it comes to the, the bad weather. Because that is the altitude, the lowest you can get before you decide that you have to... Either you continue to land or you go around. So one second, um, speed bugs, where is it that the minimums are there? Um, where do you set the minimums in this plane? EFD probably, there you go. What did we see in the chart? 1, 2, 20, let's go for that. So minimum, set that to barrel. 1, 2, 20 then enter so that should be put in there in the pfd barrow minimum 1 to 20 feet and uh, what i would expect is it would say there would be an audible warning saying minimums when you get to 1220 feet supposedly so the chart says 274 but i and yeah i think it's pretty consistent with this one it does look 274 as well so I think you approach 274 and then you turn last minute to 25 some 248. I don't know, it's weird. Interesting approach. <clears throat> so let me tag this here already. Go to heading 274. That's the final approach course. Right there. Good. And we'll make our turn here to final. Do we see the airport already? That should be right. Is it that one? I think it's a bit too far to see. Not the best visibility at the moment below. A bit, little bit of haze, but just enough to distinguish some buildings too shabby the Charles de Gaulle airport should be somewhere here actually should, should it? if you look at the VFR map oh that should be this one to our right interesting so that should be ah that one definitely nice so we'll be able to get a little peek of it so that's the glide path coming up soon, coming close to us so we can arm the approach now, follow the glide path, wait for it to come to us. <clears throat> I 
there's our runway yeah see this is 274 our approach what the heck is this guy doing we're actually descending already look at that no 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 that was a bit buggy So it looks like when you hit the approach, it starts descending immediately, which is a bit weird. <clears throat> right. Below 178 knots, we can go flaps for takeoff. One notch down. Let's go for a bit of sightseeing. I think this one is handcrafted. It's actually taking off there. It's only taking off from there. A quick view of what is the name of the airport? CDG. But yeah, I still don't get this approach. And also, we've reached the final approach fix already, but that glide path has not changed at all. It looks like we missed it. So it looks like we were in the proper glide path a while ago, but now we aren't. Yeah, that's a bit weird. We'll have to fly this manually, guys. Anyway, the final approach course doesn't seem correct, so let's move with that. And also, I'm getting huge stutters here. TBM one Charlie Lima clear to land runway two five. Wind calm. Thank you. Clear to land runway 25 TBM 1 Charlie Lima. Weird. Okay. Landing gear down. Let's wait for those three green lights. So we're sure landing gear is deployed. There we go. Moving to idle, pitching up a bit, so we can go full flaps. Oh, there it is. We should have gone around and uh, explored that airport a bit more, even though I'm stuttering like crazy right now. I guess lots of things loading in. Alright, um, pitch up. Let's get that 122 knots in there. There we go, 122 knots, full flaps. And now we can resume our descent here. There's the airport. So yeah, I guess the approach is a bit... Maybe because it coincides with the airport right like here. So you have to approach it at an angle, 274, and then you like turn last minute to the, <laughs> the proper approach. The proper... Yeah. So yeah, I think it reaches up to that point and then you're on your own basically so if you approach it at 274 like this and then once you reach this point you just basically turn left and land on your own <laughs> yeah we reached the minimums already we didn't get any audible warning minimums but we'll see it in the altitude there, that yellow thing. So here when we're on our own. Turn off the yaw damper as well when landing. Turn off everything there. Let's land this on our own. Okay, good. Wow, very busy city. We see the Eiffel Tower somewhere. It'd be nearby, you guess. Maybe you guys spotted it from afar, but let me focus on landing first. Wind calm. Not that calm from what I can see. I don't see any poppy lights as well. Looks like the windsock is pretty wild too that seems wrong as well like <laughs> full crosswind to that coming from the left doesn't seem correct mm, too low here to 
too low because we should be landing way back there in front it's fine let's just coast through here much flaring. There we go. Not the most even runway. We can take it. Reverser. Going to beta. So that the propeller can slow us down. Open the charts. Did I close the charts accidentally? I think I did. Crap. Let me move that here so I have some guidance on where we are. But we made it, guys. Somehow. TBM 1 Charlie Lima, contact ground on 121 one decimal niner. 121 one decimal niner for TBM 1 Charlie Start Lima. Start cleaning up the plane. the heaters crossing the runway normally you would have to coordinate with the ground but let's leave it as is some weird stuff happening in this airport the windsocks seem to be bugged that's full the, that windsock seems like the wind is intense strange so yeah we've seen a couple of strange things in this flight but we managed to make it in one piece not the smoothest flight not the most immersive one so definitely a couple of things need to be ironed out still but yeah you guys let me know which parts you were interested in which parts you enjoyed and which ones you want to skip and we'll see how that works where should we be going anyway we should be turning right here i think yes i see a possible parking area because this is going to the runway already Let's go in the turn here. <clears throat> you know what, just for testing, let me try and see if ground will give us proper taxi instructions. Just to compare the taxiways, I doubt it. Ellie Bar get ground TBM 1 Charlie Lima request taxi to parking. Let me show you the diagram. TBM 1 Charlie Lima taxi to general aviation parking by taxiway Alpha cross runway tree Alpha. There's not even an Alpha in here, is there? Well, that one, but cross runway 3 is this one, Alpha. So, yeah, I think the taxiways are completely wrong. So I'm just going to park somewhere. Taxiing to General Aviation nearby. Parking using Taxiway Alpha Cross Runway Tree Alpha TBM 1 Charlie Lima. So that kind of integration with the proper taxiways also is not yet properly done. Let's instead zoom in here. So we get the diagram of the airport. It doesn't have the taxiway labels, but at least we get the diagram of how it looks. There we go. So we can probably turn right here and just park somewhere there near the fire truck. <laughs> probably he been waiting for us, expecting some kind of clumsy landing. Oh, what is that? Is that the Eiffel Tower? Maybe? Because I do have points of interest turned on. Sacre Coeur. That does look familiar. Maybe in the next flight, next episode, we can do a, like a VFR flight with this plane. Tour around Paris. Paris. Because right now I don't think we will be able to see that even from afar. Yeah, so let's put this as a bit of a cliffhanger for the next episode. But in the meantime, you guys let me know what kind of layout you want because, yeah, understandably, this is a very long episode. My goodness, one hour and 20 minutes. I'm sorry, guys. 
but hopefully you enjoyed it and don't worry we'll fine-tune it next time marking break there we go that pops up for the FS economy part and now if we look at FS economy and we look at the log that will show that this flight from Heathrow to Le Bourget has finished we earned 2400 there not the best earnings but we are now in France finally I can get here because before I was stuck in the UK because that's the only place where I had decent um, satellite imagery in the older simulator anyway all right so let's leave it there guys I won't uh, shut down the plane anymore fully because uh, yeah at this point I think you're pretty much fed up with me <laughs> if you lasted this long anyway thanks for watching looking forward to the comments catch you guys soon and we'll adjust as necessary feed is still on all right have a good one come sit flying quiet <laughs>